Hi, my name is Julia Gonzalez and I welcome you to my channel. This week we'll be touring three different markets located right here in Mexico City. Join me for our tour through the narrow and crowded aisles as we get a true taste of Mexico through sampling many of the diverse flavors that makes Mexico so special. Before we get started, let me first introduce you to the two main stars of today's video. This is Ho, who will be our very entertaining guide. You can find him at trippers.mx. And our wonderful assistant guide, Regina. Ho and Regina didn't want us tourists to get lost, so they requested a meeting spot just outside our first market in the barrio La Merced. It's located in the eastern edge of the historic center of Mexico City. The La Merced market is the largest retail traditional food market in the entire city, and a very complicated one to get around, especially for people like me who are visiting. So who's ready for a quesadilla? That large circular looking pan is called a comal. Back in the early times, it was made of clay, but today it's made of metal. At the end there, you're gonna see a large round looking tortilla item, but it's called a gordita, which also means little chubby girl. <laughs> it's chubby because it's stuffed with chicharron. Next to it, you're gonna see a red bread. That's called bambaso. Most of the time, pambaso is already stuffed with potato and Mexican sausage, torizo. So here are our quesadillas. The first one was stuffed with cheese and the Mexican flour. The next one was stuffed with cheese, of course, and chicharron. They were both very good and very filling. So what you're going to find on this tour is we eat and then we walk. We eat and then we walk. Next up, we're going to try some authentic Mexican coffee. In Mexico, coffee is often brewed with cinnamon and sugar. The cinnamon and sugar aren't merely added to the coffee after brewing, but they're incorporated right into the brewing technique. The result is a coffee that is at the same time sweet and spicy. The priest told him, don't worry, we are going to take measure of time singing a song. And the song goes like this. Yeah, you can really taste the cinnamon. Good. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Don't look. Uh, chili pepper doesn't come from Mexico. It comes from Peru. Uh, sí, por favor. The term mole used in Mexican cuisine describes a type of sauce. Mole comes from a family of sauces prepared throughout the Oaxaca and Puebla regions of Mexico and is characterized by complex layered flavors derived from the intricate blends of dried chilies, spices, fruits, and seasoning. Every family has its own recipe and every family is going to tell you that they are going to do the best mole in this city. This one we love it because it has a lot of complexity and I hope you can enjoy it. If you go to on the side... We sampled a few here. I just wish they would have told me you didn't need to put the whole thing in your mouth. When visiting Mexico City, at some point in time, you will probably have a michelada. A michelada is a Mexican drink made with beer, lime juice, assorted sauces, spices, and chili peppers. It is served in a chilled salt rim glass. Depending on where you go, that salt rim glass could be enhanced with something called chamoy. And that's what we have here. Several different flavors that enhance that michelada. And then they are going to take the cup, place it in this type of catamarines. These are tamarind base with added color and added flavor. And then they are going to garnish or rim it with the powders over there. And then it depends on the restaurant. They are going to pour some lime juice, clamato, and then the beer. That is a michelada. Go ahead, yeah. select your dish, your own flavor. Go ahead. All right. 
Alright, here we go. Okay. It tastes like um like a candy. It's super sweet. It's just like like a sweet tart. Or like a gummy worm or sugar. Wow, look at this local fruit. Sapota mame is a species of trees native to Mexico and Central America. Its fruit can be eaten and made into food such as milkshakes and ice cream. It's really good. It's not overly sweet and you could compare it to um, a papaya. Next, we pop into a pineapple juice stand that has been here at the market since it opened in 1957 to try pineapple juice mixed with, you got it, tequila. So outside, it is impossible to drink alcohol. Even if you saw some other people doing it, please try to avoid it because I need to tell you, you don't look like a Mexican people, you know? Really? So, <laughs> that's as much as I could have stayed at that stand for the rest of the day, we had to keep moving. We wouldn't be in Mexico if we didn't take a taco break, right? This gentleman was the master of his grill, cooking up some delicious ribeye tacos. Or you could say, tacos de Castilla. There's also a, a one that looks like it's guacamole, but it just has a little bit of avocado. It's very spicy as well. Okay. <laughs> you really have to be careful with this, with all the sauces, all the different toppings that you can get on the tacos here, because they'll tell you it's not spicy, but it is. <laughs> not, it's not spicy to people who live here, but it is spicy to us silly foods. Speaking of spicy, let me show you the Mexican tamale. Oaxaca style tamale. Yeah. And also because this tamale here is an expert. They are the best tamales Oaxaca style in the city. I can show you. Okay. Mm. We also have this with flavor, but this is oh. spicy. Everything's spicy. They love the red one. Yeah. <laughs> I think this tour had the perfect combo of eating and walking. All the tortilleria places, they have this machine. Very, very good. However, we Mexicans, we are a little bit mistrustful because we never know where the dough is coming from. Sometimes they are selling blue tortillas that they, they just use dye instead of blue corn. But this place is special because here you can see how they are making the tortilla from the scratch. The blue corn is a little bit more expensive. And the tortilla today is a little bit more expensive. Gracias. They're very Ooh, they're hot. hot. Yeah, they're just, Woo! they're fresh. Mm. Really it's like fresh off the press. This is hot. Really good. Beautiful. Nearby is the Sonora Market, specializing in a variety of merchandise such as pottery, party items, live animals, herbal medicine, spells, and amulets. This spot I was asked not to film people's faces due to items revolving around magic, spells, and possible witchcraft. But also some spells are made to destroy people. So it works both ways. It can be good things or bad things. 
Why do they keep it upside down? Oh, this. They place it upside down because if you look them, they have some ingredients on it and the flakes can eat it, them. Oh. It's not for magic purposes. Oh, I just, thought it was for magic. <laughs> yes, oh, it's just practical things. Ho explained to us that Catholicism forbids magic. But in a market like this, it's very common to have dry herbs, spells, to have witchcraft alongside religion. Because in pre-Hispanic times, the shaman was also the medicine doctor. That is the reason everything is combined. Well, in case I was scaring you with too much spell talk, <laughs> we'll head over to our last market, the San Juan market, which specializes in gourmet and exotic foods. Oh, and also, like... this is a kind of the first original piñata. Oh, little, yes. they the were that size? shape with the tones. Ah. Mm -hmm. So like I said, this is the market known for exotic foods. At this stand, that is regulated by the government, you can have a burger made from lion, tiger, bison, buffalo, or wild boar. In these kind of places, they are going to tell you that the scorpions is super traditional. That is a lie. <laughs> it was only traditional in the north part of Mexico, but here it was never traditional before. So a nice perk that they have here at this market is if you don't want to take the fish home with you, you can ask them to cook it and you can eat it right here at the market. I was so excited when I saw we'd be tasting mezcal. I have not yet had a chance to try. They gave us some treats to also try with the mezcal, which included orange slices, cucumbers, grasshoppers, and three different types of salts made from worms. Just to start, <laughs> and, but the three worms are made with the same agave plant, espadine. Hey. <laughs> oh, sorry. This one? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> this is you enjoy, let me explain to you what you have in front. You have oranges. Red, green, I've never had a grasshopper before. <laughs> it's, um, the soul extremely seasoned. The salt it tastes like herbs. The green tomato, they are going to be in your palate. So the next thing. Well, that concludes this week's tour in Mexico. I hope you enjoyed seeing all the different flavors that Mexico has to offer. Ho and Regina's information will be included in the description below. And don't forget, subscribe!